Hi everybody. Welcome to a wonderful week at Legs Matters. My name is Chantal Clough and I am the personalization and the self-care lead here at Accelerate. I'm honored to be here today and to be able to share with you the significant importance of citizen empowerment, which in turn will enable patients to take charge of their own legs and feet via personalized support. As a very high agenda item for NHS England and thus our new ICS, it is a critically important development and I have recognized that by merely exploring this work, it is possible to shift influence and responsibility away from existing and historic ways of working. Citizen empowerment is to quote, communities and citizens in control. Real people, real power, aiming to pass this power into the hands of individuals and communities. I would agree, but I'd like to break this down to reality and how collectively both professionals and patients can begin to break down assumptions and barriers to care and truly see how empowering our citizens with lower limb issues can enable our patients to better care for themselves and feel motivated and really become confident in challenging the norm and become joint experts. For all, all the professionals listening, this is about a change in historic patient and professional relationship. It's beginning to understand and accept that patients are our greatest asset. We really have to provide and deliver quality outcomes with a true patient-centered focus. My role at Accelerate, albeit a new and different role, has allowed me to really drive citizen empowerment via underpinning elements of the NHS personalized care agenda. The core components we are using here at Accelerate to advocate citizen empowerment, our patient activation measure, health and wellness coaching using motivational interviewing techniques, and more recently, social prescribing, all of which can ultimately result in, in a patient feeling empowered to begin their journey of self-supported management, ultimately looking after their legs and feet much better. I'd now like to walk you through how I see empowerment working in practice to really maximize this new partnered relationship. So I refer in the first instance to the empowerment dance. And this is touching on the components I've just mentioned. It does after all take two to tango. Couldn't resist that one listeners, apologies. So like any dance, we start with the frame. And this is where we start our empowerment dance. Here is where we introduce the patient activation measure, which really indicates the ability of the citizen to really begin their health and wellness journey. This validated tool has four varying levels, indicating if a patient is passive and thinks the professional should really fix them or they are merely needing more specific information so a pam level four informs us that the citizens are really engaged already but they still might need a bit of light touch support really by knowing this and by utilizing the patient activation measure it determines the next stage of the dance and even how the treatment plan may begin to look it is essentially setting the scene, framing what's to come. So the second element of our empowerment dance is the tempo. And thanks here to the patient activation measure, because here is where we begin to understand at what speed and pace the relationship will develop 
and really what the patient can and cannot manage at this time. We understand this by beginning wellness coaching using motivational interviewing. Here we really get to know one another. Here is where we build our relationship so we completely understand each other's roles in this journey. So uh, the third part of our dance, our empowerment dance, is the rhythm. Your frame set, your foundations are there. You're building up the relationship uh, via having holistic conversations. You're getting to know one another and building the trust. So here at the rhythm, as I've said, the PAM, the coaching, the motivational interviewing, here is where you can start exploring and even agree in a goal. Here is where the shared decision making happens. Here is where we can really advocate that as a patient, you have choices. Here is where, again, you can start to see little steps, more movement in the dance. Here also, and more recently at Accelerate, we've introduced a social prescribing aspect. And this is giving all our lovely patients and citizens an opportunity to have a community support around them, reaching out with others, like-minded people, can really give everybody a sense of belonging, which can ultimately have a huge impact on their care. Lastly, we have in our empowerment dance, our routine. We've built the steps. We started with the foundations. We've really built the tempo and the rhythm with the patient and the citizen. We now trust one another. We're in a safe space. We are allowing a patient to open up and really think about what matters to them, who's important in their life, what goal is it they want to reach. And here in the routine part of the dance, again, the PAM is indicating improvement. Here you can redo the PAM and really look at the patient's journey and understand the metrics you've been taking. So through having holistic and different conversations, We've built a great foundation and partnered working is happening. Engagement in motivation is increasing and the citizen is taking more ownership of their lower limbs and feet. And perhaps feels able now to begin exploring more, more confidently what's happening in the community. And really for me, it really gives them a little bit of the life back which they may have lost having a diagnosis of lymphedema or wounds can have a real impact as we know. So for me, this dance is about giving a little bit of life back that they may have lost due to this diagnosis. I do hope this has really shed some light on the importance and the possibility of citizen, of citizen empowerment. And now I'd like you all to witness the impact of the empowerment dance. You're going to be watching a little video next with myself and a lovely citizen named Dennis. Myself and Dennis have been working together for approximately 11 weeks and Dennis was a PAM level one on his arrival here at Accelerate. He had bilateral lymphedema, he had concerns over his weight and he's recently had a heart attack. So let's hear from Dennis and let's hear his light bulb moment and his story of empowerment. Thank you very much. Well, hello again, everybody. Uh, welcome back. So this is Dennis and me and Dennis, uh, we're just going to be having a bit of a natural around Dennis's empowerment dance. So as I mentioned on my last video, uh, me and Dennis have been working together for 10 weeks or so, mm -hmm. and we have done some wonderful things and we've reached a lovely point in your journey. So I'd like to start by asking Dennis, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Um, my name's uh, Dennis O'Neill. I'm 55 and I live in East London. I'm a full-time carer. And um, I came to the Infodemic Clinic um, and was treated for lymphedema 
for a number of um, a number of weeks and months, and uh, basically, um, my story is about how I then went on to uh, develop um, other conditions mm -hmm. which affected my lymphedema and uh, how by coming to terms with um, a heart problem that I had, how I decided that was, the, that was the motivation I needed to take care of myself as a whole. Mm -hmm. and, then, and when was that, Dennis? Was that recently? Uh, that was the start of this year. During, okay. yeah, In the middle of COVID as well? In the middle well. of COVID. Just what you didn't need? No. Okay. And so I was quite, everyone was quite cut off. Yeah. And um, so it was almost more important to sort of be able to manage your condition yourself, whether it be to do it with my heart or my lymphedema. So, um, under carer as well, yeah. So, yeah. there was lots going on there, yeah, because I'm looking after somebody else as well. And there is that fight and balance between, um, you know, looking after yourself and then being able to be well enough to look after somebody else. Yeah. And, um, is it all right if I ask then around your lymphedema, in your opinion, obviously, diagnosis and then the care you was receiving? What was that like? What did it make you feel like? Did you feel like you was managing it or did you feel like you was engaging enough? How did you feel about it? I didn't actually. I felt quite uh, cut off in, within myself. Okay. Uh, even though I had like brilliant staff with me and trying to almost like pull something out of me to, you know, get more involved. Um, and um, I can't thank them enough for persevering with me. And during those times, because they were the, they really did, and the things that they said to me during those times really did stay with me when I did decide to get well. And um, yes, and uh, when when the light bulb moment come where I needed to sort of um, to sort of get really involved in my care, and uh, I decided well what sort of patient do I need to be? And uh, I need to be as open to ideas, uh, my own and especially uh, people treating me, um, and listening to the experts. And um, yeah. Um, Realising you're the expert as well, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. And I, and I think that was part of our journey, wasn't it? Yeah, and um, and to do it in a space where I felt, first of all, I was safe. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, and encouraged whatever mood I come to each session with the wellness side of um, our sessions. Um, I always... I always saw it as a, a situation where um, it was me um, drawing out from the experts what they knew so that I could then take it on board. And that, um, that was sort of supported um, uh, and I was constantly encouraged to do that. And that has been something that, as I'm, I'm getting treated for my uh, lower legs and lymphedema, I'm also getting treated elsewhere in the NHS uh, for my heart condition. Okay. And so everything I've learned at Accelerate and, um, you know, with the wellness coach and um, the encouragement I get from everybody here it's been this. It's been somewhere I, I'm going elsewhere in the NHS with, in terms of I'm asking more questions. I'm um, even a bit more demanding and uh, saying, you know, well, you know, is this available for me? Yeah. And um, and not feeling guilty, not feeling I'm taking up people's time. Yeah. And. Um, yeah, and not feeling that I've been a nuisance, but actually involved in my own healthcare. 
Um, and um, and you found that difficult yeah, at I the did, start of yeah. our uh, meetings, didn't you? I think you yeah. realised you were, okay, help me. Yeah. You know, what is it I've got to do? Yeah. Um, and we kind of explored that as well with the patient's activation yeah. measure. Yeah. And you started, as I said earlier, as a PAM level one. Yeah. Um, and I think you realised that really early on, didn't yeah. you? And I think then it was a case of, you rolled your sleeves up a little bit and said, okay, what is it? It's me, it's yeah. my limbs, it's my legs. What can I do? And you identified that you needed a little bit of support there because I think I've always uh, I encouraged you that you are. Yeah. You go away and reflect a lot. Yeah. And I think we've identified that. And yeah. you're very, very aware of yourself and your abilities, but it, it just needed a bit of yeah. kind of pulling out, I think, didn't it? And then you were on this role. Yeah. You were on the role of, I'm going to use the kind of empowerment dance here, I think, but you were on this amazing role of, okay, you brought ideas every week. Mm. You had a goal in mind. Yeah. And then we worked out and I pulled out with you what you already knew. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us a bit more about that. Um, well, I, I felt that in the beginning, um, I think it's uh, as a role as a carer, you almost park yourself aside and you just focus on um, on somebody else all the time, and that can be and that can be um, a habit you get into that you're almost unaware of. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and most carers most carers identify with that a lot. And then uh, you don't realise you're doing it in other places. You don't just do it with your when you're caring. You do it, you know, in other parts of your life. And I think I was doing that around my own health, around my diet, around my uh, everything. You know, I was just letting things slide. And um, yeah, and when I did decide to sort of change and um, and start to tackle um, what was what was at the root of um, what was at the root of my uh, passivity? Um, I um, I stopped a bit. Um, That's I, okay. Yeah, there's um, lots to think yeah, about, Dennis. Yeah, you take your time. Yeah. Well, uh, I think that when um, when I sort of got into thinking about my passivity and then uh, having the energy to sort of move forward. Mm -hmm. And everyone met me where I was at. That's what it felt like, Good. you know. Yeah. Um, when, when people started to see that I was uh, involved, they, they gave me a bit more to do. And then I was like, can I do more? Yes. And then it, it started, I started on a roll of um, uh, just getting more and more better and yeah and it felt quite natural and um, at my own pace as well I didn't feel rushed or pushed I felt um, yeah I felt in control and that was um, yeah and that it was a slow period but uh, and it and it built slowly, mm -hmm. and it didn't happen overnight. And I had to be involved uh, at every level of of um, yeah, every 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 level of change. And I also knew that I wasn't on my own. You know, if there was um, if there was setbacks, there was always the next session. Oh God, God, this has happened. You know. Um, well, we had some of those weeks, I yeah, think, didn't we? I yeah. think it wasn't all, you know, jolly and light and wonderful no. because life isn't like mm. that. And, you know, we did um, experience yeah. tough weeks. Yeah. And, I, and I would always know because then if they come in and say, I've had a funny week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we always used to just go, okay, let's get a coffee. And, you know, I think I loved our appointments at the garden as well. Yeah. I think, you know, you was in a space that you felt really comfortable with, you know, you was out in nature. Mm. And yes, we did obviously have those weeks and it was tough. Yeah. But it was you believing in yourself, me believing in you, and us joining up our expertise. Yeah. 
you know you better than anybody. Mm. I'm a coach. I can you know pull it out of you a little bit. So it wasn't always an easy ride mm. uh, because nothing is. Mm. Um, and obviously, if it was, we'd bottle it. Um, but you found your rhythm, didn't you? Definitely. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I think you know. Explain a bit more about that, then, Dennis. Um, well, in terms of. Uh, how I um, learn anyway is I think I think I am somebody that I like to talk and I like I'm quite conversational and I like to connect with people anyway mm. and um, so I had somebody that would listen which was a which was a, um, which was brilliant and I had that person for like an hour or so mm. uh, you know once, and that was me yeah that was one <laughs> and. Um, yeah, and um, that, that is uh, that's something you don't get everywhere else in life. You know, mm-hmm. someone that will just, just focus in on you. And uh, so that was that was a good thing. And it was a good thing to, you know, like in midweek, thinking, oh, I've got Chantel on Tuesday. And, you know, I could discuss this then with her. Or, and, um, yeah, uh, that that to me was uh, a comfort, and like we said earlier, it wasn't just um, it wasn't just something that you have to uh, expect straight away. It's something that builds. It's about having rapport with someone, and in the same way as you wouldn't sort of bump into somebody in a, a restaurant or a cafe and tell them all your all your problems yeah. you know normally you, you wait until uh you do that with friends where you drip feed them and then you, occasionally you'll have a, a few drinks and then you go oh god this has been happening and then you let it out and um i think that that was what was happening with us it's like there was uh you know tentative steps at the beginning there was um learning how each other talk when to pause, um, when um, yeah, when it, when it was important to uh, just listen to somebody, listen to somebody else uh, respond back to you, yeah. and um, yeah, and eventually, without almost like invisible thread, you know, you do build up some sort of friendship or rapport, and then other things happen off of that like in real life with other friends uh, but this is in a, a professional setting but it's still uh it's still uh of value to both people i think excellent yeah. i'm glad to hear that yeah i'm glad you've enjoyed it i'm glad you found yeah. worth in there and i think you know i think i just want to ask you do you feel now over 10 weeks of us obviously having different dialogues with each other it's been very non-medical. It's yeah. been around various things in your life, all of which you've identified. So I guess around empowerment, are you feeling empowered? I do. I do feel more empowered. I feel, uh, yeah, I'm more in control, more confident. And, um, yeah, I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to sort of, uh, Hopefully, hopefully it will. Um, it won't have just an effect with just my healthcare, but everywhere else I go. That's the whole. Uh, and so that yeah. my whole life will uh, include, you know, what you want. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm currently I'm currently doing an exercise plan. I'm also on a weight loss program. Yeah. And and it's all going forward and everything's working for me. And I've had blips along the way with that. And it's knowing when to sort of be kind to myself and go, oh God, no, I don't feel like, I don't really don't feel like I, I want, you know, that salad today. And then, then like sometimes persevering, sometimes actually cheating in a nice way. Yeah. And then going back to going back and saying, I've had a blip. You know. And you've been really, really good, I think, at looking at, okay, I know you mentioned a while ago, I love a pizza, but, yeah. you know, 
So we looked at different ways of doing a pizza. Yeah. We looked at an alternative. Yeah. And I think you've been brilliant at thinking, what's the alternative to this? Yeah. I still want to have a little bit of a tree. Yeah. I was looking around alternatives and we I certainly explored different areas around that. So, yeah. and you are doing brilliantly with yeah. your weight loss as well. Yeah. So carry on, carry on, explain to me. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, well, everything's sort of going quite well. And uh, everything I do, everything I feel that I'm doing, it, it's working. And in terms of my uh, lower legs, my, um, and my health of my, that's improved because I've got an underlying, I had the underlying heart problem and I got that treated. And now my lymphedema is, it's still there and I'm still having to uh, treat and look after that myself. I don't feel so overwhelmed by it. Uh, whereas before, uh, because I didn't, I wasn't aware of my diagnosis or my heart, uh, everything I did for my legs would work for a while and then they'd, my legs would break down again or I'd have lots of swelling. And uh, that was building up to, you know, me having a problem with my heart. Uh, but now that's sort of dealt with on both levels, everything I do for my legs um, seems to work. You know, so when I'm putting my wraps on and I've just creamed, um, I'm getting the results. And I'm, I'm having weeks where, you know, my, leg, my legs are better and I feel better. And, and you're finally in your trainers, you're in your yeah, shoes, you're in your trainers yeah. after all, all this time as well. Because I was wearing, I was having to wear Crocs because they stretched. Yeah. And they weren't really that good for my feet because they sweat and mm -hmm. they're not the best thing to wear all the time. Yeah. And now I'm able to wear leather shoes and I'm allowed to, I'm also wearing trainers and um, I'm feeling the benefit there. Right. Um, and yeah, um, yeah, I've just come from really being passive to actually thinking ahead and being optimistic about um, I can see that definitely. Yeah. you know what else is there and um, and also how to help other people so yeah I mean I was going to ask you then what's next because I think if we look at the dance here you you definitely started out really really passive in your care which you've mentioned you was a PAM level one then we start to build our relationship. You've mentioned about having a space to come and just be you and be heard. Um, and and we had some lovely times in the summer in the garden, mm -hmm. which was lovely. And then we built our rhythm. You identified your goals, which were around weight loss, which was about and your mother as well. There was lots of things we identified mm -hmm. in the sessions we did. And then the end of the dance is you found your routine a bit now, I think. Well, yeah, yeah. obviously more than a bit, you've really found your routine and you're continuing doing the weight loss, you're continuing doing your rehab, which is getting up every morning, exercise. doing your exercising, um, but you're doing it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you've now got the confidence, the drive, all the things you mentioned, all the words you've mentioned to really know to maintain this and to understand that if you do, have a little bit of a blip, where to go, who to contact, what you've got to do. So you're doing brilliantly. So what's next? Well, what's next is um, hopefully my experience isn't just uh, my experience. I want other people to experience what, what's happened to me. That's why it's brilliant to do this video. Yeah. And also here, um, at the Lymphedem Clinic where I'm getting treated, um, there is an opportunity for me to um, set up a group, a men's group, because uh, I identified that there was lots of things that I was experiencing. Mm -hmm. I started to think, well, maybe somebody else is going, thinking what I'm thinking and wondering about yeah. what I'm so wondering okay. about. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to, like, no, I sort of wanted to see if I could um, create a a group uh, to, yeah, to just exchange ideas. And hopefully um, with the ideas that I've had, that they just don't, 
just lay within me, they lay within other people. And they, people can identify with one another and uh, just support one another, which is a brilliant thing to do. Exactly. And um, yeah, I think it's, it's uh, again, it's staying doing something positive around my health and, um, and around my confidence as well. I'm feeling that I'm confident to be able to want to do this. So. And we're doing all right with that. We've obviously made headway yes. with it, haven't we? I think, you know, as I say in all the sessions, it's little steps, but we are definitely on the right road of getting this group, yeah. um, men's group in the first instance, but I know uh, Dennis has got lots of ideas to expand it to all, all here at Accelerate, yeah. but we've identified that of, well, obviously Dennis identified that you wanted to obviously start with men's group because uh, where there's language around obviously garments and things and we wanted to address all these things and you mentioned a lot around, you know, using the ointments, using the creams. It's likely a lot of men are not going to do that. No. And it's just getting your inner room together to hear one another. Yeah. So we're really, really excited here to for obviously Dennis to get this group started. Um, and it's definitely on the right road, I think, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. So, have you got any last words, Dennis, there before um, we wrap this up? I just want to um, just thank everyone here, and to thank you, and to thank my little demon nurse for all the support I've had, and um, hopefully I'll be working here uh, with everyone after this. <laughs> so, uh, I'm not letting people, you go, Dennis. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> other people get to, you know, other people get to uh, experience real change and, uh, and real confidence. Feel empowered. Yeah. This is all about empowerment. So thank you very much for coming along. Hope that's been really helpful. If anybody would like to contact us and ask any questions about this, then you can contact us via the our email address and the phone number. So thank you very much indeed, everybody. Um, en enjoy the rest of Legs Matters. Hi, everybody. So uh, that was Dennis, obviously, uh, talking about his empowerment dance. Um, so has anybody got any questions? I've noticed one here um, around the patient activation measures. Apologies, there was a video that we got a little bit mixed up with that explained that. So would you like me to go ahead and explain what the patient activation measure is? So the patient activation measure is a validated tool that really lets us know in a word the patient is in their ability to obviously self-manage. So I'll give you an example. You've got a PAM level one, a patient activation measure level one. And this really indicates that a patient is extremely passive and deems you as a nurse the expert and it's your job to fix really. And the more you move up the levels, and then obviously the encouragement and the motivation gets better. Now, uh, the highest uh, level of PAM you can ha uh, have is PAM level four. And this indicates that you are absolutely feeling empowered in your healthcare, in your journey of wellness. And, and really you've got the uh, education and the motivation to obviously self-manage. So to give you an example, Dennis arrived um, at Accelerate, as I mentioned in the video, as a PAM level one. Um, and I think within roughly six weeks, he became a PAM level four. And this was just through, you know, different dialogues with Dennis, really to understand and where he was right now and what his worries were. So, um, and if you want to know any more about the PAM, then obviously give me an email um, and I'll be happy to have a chat with you about it. Um, how does the PAM help? So the PAM, Anna helps you by giving you a baseline. It gives you a starting point of where the patient is really. Um, what the PAM does, it gives a level and a score. And obviously the lower the level, you know the patient is not really there yet. If you start obviously giving them loads of info. Um, I think we're all very, very good at saying, here's a leaflet, here's a video, you go away and watch it. And the realization is that, and the patients have lots going on in their life and 
and really may not be ready to kind of learn about their limbs and learn about their wounds because they've got lots of other things going on at home, like and a family life, the housing, you know, finance issues. So the PAM level really gives you the footing to understand kind of where the patient is right now and if they're ready to start their journey of self-management. So can you describe why motivational interviewing obviously gives a different conversation? Thank you, Alison. She's putting in lots of questions. Uh, yes, I can, because um, I'll be honest, I'm a huge advocate of MI and um, because you know what it does is it lets the person talk. You reflect back what's going on. It obviously lets the patient know you're listening. Lots of ways and um, lots of methodology in MI and it really allows a different, more holistic dialogue. It is non-medical and it really allows the patient to obviously go down a path of their own discovery as well. Um, and the beauty of it is it lets you talk about them and the moment you give them a bit of a hook of this is your appointment you tell me what's going on in your life what really matters where are the barriers who have you got around you in your life what's happening right now what's your main worry and I ask loads of questions one of which is if you had now one wish what would it be? Um, and patients often find that really, really hard because it's never asked. But I tell you what it does, it really starts a dialogue with them. They go, oh, I've never been asked that before. And it does start a dialogue. Um, Sarah Gardner, from my experience in the community, we have had many other patients who have benefited from PAM. Excellent, Sarah, happy to hear it. Um, is it Anna possible to introduce this in um, a generalist kind of area. In my opinion, Sarah, it is. Um, I think uh, uh, the PAM just gives you a starting point. It may not be perhaps, I mean, everybody and everything. I mean, us as nurses, um, I mean, and the patients as well, it really gives them an understanding of where they are because you might have a patient who's extremely passive, who thinks, well, no, I'm not, I'm really engaged. So in my opinion, PAM can be used anywhere because it really gives you a starting point. Um, what's this say? How does PAM help the clinicians? Is it a bit like motivational interviewing? So I kind of feel I'm getting loads of questions here around the patient's activation measure and motivational interviewing. And a both of which, in my opinion, can go hand in hand. Now, when we talk about MI, and it doesn't need highly skilled, you know, and all it is, use the ROS is what I always use. ROS is reflect and ask loads of questions, which I just open, listen, and then at the end of a dialogue, you summarise you know, what's been said because it really allows the patient to understand that you've listened, you've heard them, you understand it exactly where they are right now. And there's lots of things around MI and PAM, and I'd be happy to speak with any of you about them at any point because I can go off on a tangent and be here all day talking about them. You and Dennis mentioned getting in to a rhythm. So yes, there was a video, apologies, that we never showed because of time, and but it's going to be on the Facebook Live. And the way I've done this around empowerment is I've um, kind of done it as a dance. So obviously my empowerment dance, it starts you know, with the frame, obviously like you know, when a dance does. Now the frame is all about you know, starting uh, the journey, setting the scene with the patient. And it's obviously here, you know, where we use the patient activation measure. Next part of the dance is the tempo. And this is where you start to build your relationship. You start to get a, but you start to understand you know, one another and where each other's are and what your roles are in this journey together and kind of, kind of joining up your um, an expertise. Next part of the dance is the rhythm. And really this is where you've built the tempo, you now have the palm, you've started using a bit of motivational interviewing and it's during the rhythm it's when you start identifying the goals and then once you've identified the goals you carry on with the tempo the rhythm starts to get a little better and the hope is then you know 
right at the end you build a routine and this is when the PAM is redone again to obviously see the journey of the patient. So I've obviously done my empowerment of the journey and I kind of linked it to a dance um, only because I love dancing really as well. So um, I'm doing a bit more work um, around that because I feel it's a really good message for patients and for obviously you guys out there as well around you know, how do I think you know, of my journey of wellness or what it's going to look like? So I want you to think of it as a dance. You know, start the rhythm, you build it, you build it, and then you end up really, I mean, in a lovely routine and are with your nurses, with yourself to obviously start empowering yourself more and leading your self-management more. Uh, Victoria Fry, thank you, Vicky. Is there, Anna Summer, we can obviously find this information. Yes, there's lots of stuff on our website. Um, if you want to give me a call or email me, you can do. Lovely Legs Matters as well. Um, I mean, empowerment is, it is out there. Obviously, wellness and personalization is out there. But we need now to advocate this more and really get our lovely patients involved in feeling, yes, I've got a voice. Yes, I matter. And... And the more we do this and join up with patients and realise that actually patients are our greatest asset in any, obviously any appointment, then that is when the, and the magic starts, really, in my opinion. But yeah, there's our website. And like I said, you can always contact me directly and I can link you with various things which you may need. Um, so I think, oh, are we out of time, Sue? Are we on time? I think I've answered everything there. Thanks, Chantelle. That's been absolutely amazing. And Thank yeah, you. I think we're out of questions and we're slightly over time, which is absolutely Sorry. fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you.